on the wire in association with Ladbrokes. Yes, indeed, it is that time of the season again. It is Irish Guineas weekend, three days of fantastic racing. Mark Boylan is going to be there for the Irish field. He joins us as well as Racing TV's Danny Archer. And we are sponsored by Ladbrokes today, so we have Nicola McGeady in the house. I'll start with you, Nikki. How are you? I'm not too bad. Nikki is. I hate Nikki, Johnny. But yeah, okay. no, I'm good. <laughs> well, you were better before I called you Nikki. How are you, Mark? I'm grand. You, you can leave off Mark here like that. No, it's all good, Johnny. We'll keep it straight. How is Dan the man? I'm good, Johnny. I'm a late addition. I think someone said they had to pull out, so they've drafted me in from Ibiza. So it's the first time I've ever been on On The Wire whilst being on holiday. Are you actually in Ibiza? <laughs> I am, Johnny, yeah. Have you found a bookmaker to lay a few bets on the car? <laughs> there was actually quite a nice bookie down the road, actually. So, um, yeah, it's a busy weekend of sports. So I might have to pop in there a couple of times if I can get a spare moment. Yeah, we take for granted that essentially you're always available to work now. And every time I'm on holiday, I'm taking Zoom calls. I was on the Blasket Islands, a remote island that doesn't have electricity uh, last year. And I was doing a Zoom call uh, for racing. So um, that's just modern life. But let's get to uh, straight into the action. Um, I'm going to introduce the Labrick's bet offer here, which is a £5 matched bet for existing customers in the Republic of Ireland. So that's a €5 uh, euro match bet for existing uh, customers in the Republic of Ireland. And and uh, bet responsibly this weekend. There's so much going on. We have Limerick as well uh, into all the British action and uh, the Curra as well. But let's start with Friday's action. And we're going to get straight into it here. Um, so we have declarations at this stage for Friday and Saturday. Um, and the big race, Friday's a little bit lower key, but I do find the undercards for these um, classic weekends can be pretty classy as well. But the race we're going to look at on Friday, and we're going to give a nap uh, for each of the days as well, is the uh, 8 o'clock, which is the Irish Stallion Farms EBF Habitat uh, Handicap. And we're going to have a look back here on a really key piece of form. I think we had four runners in this race that was won by John Riggins on the uh, 13th of May. John Riggins, who's um, going to emerge from the pack here and win. We have um, I'll scatter these horses, the runner-up towers on as well. Mark, this race is going to be key to the outcome of the 8 o'clock Friday. Yeah, for sure, Johnny. John Regans is one of these cliff horses for a long time for me, and I deserted him at the wrong hour here uh, last time out, but uh, look, at he's probably a horse that is better than a mark in the 80s when all falls right. Um, but still, my concern from here would be we're, we're much better ground than was the case last time at Navin. He's generally been campaigned on ground with a bit of an ease, uh, I'm here at Fairy House today. The Gores Bridge breeze up sails, and the sun is spitting the stones here. It's you know, and the ground seems to be dry. And you look at all the reports for tracks across Ireland. There's mentions of watering uh, being monitored, etc. So look at it. I think that's going to be the biggest obstacle to victory for John Regans if he can handle that bit of better ground. I'm not saying he can't, but it, it is a challenge. And um, one that you you know to me anyway that will definitely handle. Uh, nice ground would really, really love it. Doesn't always get it. His dream today of Edo McGuinness's. I think that's got a big chance. Um, you know, this race is. It's actually, as you say, it's a competitive race. And last year we had a couple of smart horses finish down the field that are now group horses: Eris and Psyche and Moss Tucker. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a good piece of form. But this guy has a lot of back class dream today. Um, you know, six furlongs ideal, good ground ideal. And I don't mind the blow draw either. You know, last year, the first two home were drawn four and seven. I think this guy is installed too. So uh, Adam McGuinness in flying form as well. He's had four winners from his last 13 runners uh, over the last nine or 10 days. So he might be able to value each way potentially. But look, at as you say, if John Regans does take to the, the better ground, uh, he's going to take a fair bit of stopping too. Yeah, it's funny what you say there about John Riggins. I was exactly the same. I'd kind of effectively given up on him and he, he duly did deli deliver the last day. That was a race in which Typical. Heavenly Power... Yeah, <laughs> that's just how it works. Heavenly Power, his stable mate, was actually favourite on that occasion. Again, though, you'd wonder with the ground and I don't know what it's like in Ibiza, Danny, but it's um, it's hot in Dublin today. It's hot. It's going to be a challenge for the Curra, I think, uh, to keep the ground um, on the safe side, actually, with the with the weather we have. Him. But uh, what do you like here, Danny? Well, I've spent all that money to go away on holiday and the weather's better back home, I'm hearing. We've got we've had storms over here. But um, Hurricane Ivor, I think the piece of form I like is uh, Hurricane Ivor beat Swift Flight back on April the 16th at Akura. Now, the problem with both of these, a bit like what Marcus suggested, is they might be better with a bit of cut in the ground. But Hurricane Ivor, he's a son of Iverwood. He um, he won at Newbury when trained by William Haggis on good ground. So I'm not too concerned. And he was pitched back into listed company last time out. And I just think dropped back here into handicap company. He'd be the one I'd be with, despite carrying a bit of weight. Whilst the only concern I'd have with Swift Flight is you would know better than me, but Ken Condon's yard don't really seem to be firing yet. Two from 25, I think the record in 2023. Uh, but I think that's a decent bit of form, so I'll be I'll be sticking with those two against the field. 
So, yeah, we're going to delve now uh, into Saturday's action. But before all of that, we're going to get naps from everyone. And we will start on Friday with you, Mark. In the last race, hopefully we'll get out on good terms and set us up for the weekend. Uh, face the puck out as an old favourite of mine uh, for Michael O'Callaghan. Runs in the 8.30. Um, this horse has improved leaps and bounds from where it had been going in terms of direction. Once was was pretty useful, lost its way and really came back last season. I think he's £24 higher than he was when he first returned last season but having said that I was concerned last time at Nace last weekend that the ground was going to be too quick for him he's now quashed that fear for me and he looks to have returned in absolutely really really good nick and uh, up to a mile the way he came home last time at, at Nace wouldn't discourage you whatsoever um, no I, I think he's going to go really really close it's a slight drop in class as well last time he was within three quarters of a length of what I consider a really really progressive handicapper in Blues Emperor for Johnny Murta this time he's nearly top rated in this race. He's close to, to the head of the, of the weight. So uh, face the puck out for Colin Keane and Michael Callaghan, hopefully to get us out in a good note in the 8.30. Yeah, if you're looking at the bottom of the screen, you will see that Nikki and I are uh, Nikki and I are clashing on the 6 o'clock. Nicola, what is your selection? Yeah, listen, it is a really tough card tomorrow, Johnny. Um, but yeah, and the Phillies handicap at 6 o'clock. Chloe Mackin is the one that kind of jumps out for me. She ran Breeders' Cup winner um, Victoria Road to a half a length last season. Now, she was un- unable, you know, to show her best in the softer going at the current in October or in the Group 3 Cornell's Court Stakes last time, but then won at Dundalk in April, showing she has trained on. She's obviously back on good ground and comes from Johnny Murtha's yard, who are generally, you know, running well right now. Although I can't imagine she will be favoured, as you do have uh, Jesse's runner who has uh, won her last two as well. But yeah, Phil Mackin for me. Yeah, and it is Jesse's runner for me, Snowcap. She is by Churchill out of a half sister to Snow Fairy. I don't think the dam herself did an awful lot, but I love the way she won the last day. She uh, went from sort of being squeezed along to absolutely pulling away Jesse's flyness. And um, yeah, I think Nikki and I, two good selections there. On the wire, in association with Latbro. We're joined now by Aidan O'Brien. You will see he's actually in front of the house in Bally Doyle. Aidan, this is a brilliant weekend. I am struck by the fact that you only have one runner on Friday, which is remarkable in itself. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose um, we kind of uh, the only race really suited is on, on, on Friday, Johnny, really. Um, and uh, I suppose that's just the way it, it was, really, for the card, really. Tell us about your, your horse on uh, Friday, Sub-Zero. He's a couple of nice runs, and obviously a lot of people will, will be backing him on the base that he's your, your runner on Friday. Yeah, it, listen, he's a grand horse. He's, his last run was nice, and he had a nice run before that. Uh, obviously, he's Galileo, but seven furlongs su- seems to be um, uh, a good trip for him. Uh, we were very happy with him the last one. He was just beaten by, I think, a nice horse of Johnny, uh, Johnny Murphy's at, at Leperstown. We're just talking, Aidan. Danny Archer, who is also on the call, is in Ibiza, but uh, you're in uh, every, you're in a place every bit as nice in Bally Dial. But how, what's your what's your take on the ground tomorrow? What it'll be like? Because it is very warm at the moment. Yeah, I'd imagine it's going to be a safe, good to firm ground. Uh, I'd imagine. Mm. Uh, as far as a beautiful track and Brendan and uh, everyone, uh, they always uh, Brian and all his team. Um, always get it right, Richie. It's it, they're a great team there, people, and and. It's, usually very safe ground and I'd imagine that's what's going to be it's going to be beautiful uh, weather I think and it's, it's, it's isn't it brilliant to have that kind of ground absolutely let's get let's go straight into the Tattersalls Irish 2000 guineas this is a race uh, the, the feature race at 340 on Saturday races will be shown on racing TV and we can't wait for it and we're going to have a look back um, at the guineas um, here at Newmarket and I guess Aidan you're, you're the place to start because it was a bit of an off day for you tour horses but as you as you pointed out afterwards they had excuses yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was a bit, bit of a mess for us, I suppose. Uh, little Big Bear jumped forward and um, there wasn't a lot of pace on. And I think uh, um, uh, the horse that finished third in the Guineas or the second in the Guineas ran straight into the back of him after mm. after a short time. And and, uh, and then he knocked over Augustus Rodan. And, and uh, listen, it was just a, kind of all a bit of an event for us, really. Uh, our, our travel plans got changed a couple of days before it. And, combination the ground was very soft uh, a combination of a lot of things just didn't work today it was just one of those days really and we've got to get you while you're there how is it goes to Rodan good yeah he seems good uh, we're very happy with him since uh, then everything has went really well and and uh, um, no but couldn't be happier at the moment yeah, that's exciting Mark talk to me here with the second and third uh, coming to the Cora which is fantastic for the race and also obviously the supplement and uh, adding to the intrigue of it 
big time, Johnny. You know, look at I disappointed that Al Riff isn't here because to me he would have been very, very hard to beat and it seems to be a small little niggle that's held him up and hopefully we'll see him back again in no, no time. But uh, it's a very open look to it. I suppose, to me, the, the 2000 guineas at Newmarket, when you had some of the big guns, such as Augusta Dan, Little Big Bear, not running up to scratch, I'm just not totally convinced that it's a high level of form. But looking at this race and treating it on its own merits, I'm not so sure it's, it, it's all that deeper either. So I think that this hinges to me on whether Ryle Scotsman can reproduce that run and, you know, is the same horse turning out later this month after a big effort like that because it didn't go to plan for him either you know he's had you know a, a, an unclear run through and he's probably come on the wrong side of the track relative to where Chaldean was I think if he produces the same performance he's going to be very hard to beat but I'd be interested to hear what Aiden has to say on Paddington because he's trying to do what Autad did a few years ago in terms of going Madrid to Tetrach um, has he been showing you those sort of leaps forward at home as he's progressed through the spring Aiden? Yeah, no, everything has been good with him. Uh, obviously, he's only had the two runs this year. Uh, last year, he went to Ascot. He, he ran first time out, and he was very green, and we were a bit disappointed with him. And we gave him a bit of time then. He came back and won very nice at the Cur. I think the ground might have been on the easy side the day he won. Mm. Then, obviously, he won very easily the Madrid, I think, in, in Nace, on easy ground again. And then he obviously won the Tetrack, and I think that was probably an easy ground as well. So it's going to be interesting. This is the first time back on this type of ground. Uh, we're very happy with everything he's done since, and uh, everything has went smooth since. And uh, all his uh, all his his works and uh, obviously his races were just a nice build up to the to the guinea. So this is going to be interesting to see. He's a beautiful looking horse, Aiden. He's fine, big, uh, scopy, good looking horse. Um, absolutely, and. Uh, uh, he's travelled usually with plenty of pace, and uh, but we're learning about him all the time, I think. What about your other two, then, Cairo and Age of Kings? Yeah, Cairo loves the ground. Uh, he's in good shape. He hasn't ran, I think, since Dubai. Uh, the triple suits him well. A very tough, hardy horse, and looking forward to seeing what he's going to do on that ground. Age of Kings is his first run back, obviously, of the year, so we're hoping that we'll get he'll run a nice race and hopefully slot him to some of the race in Ascot after that. Lovely. And Nicola, we have a Proud and Regal as well finishing third in a derby trial. This race is so much going for it. Um, you know, so much depth to it. 11 different sponsors, 11 different stallions for the 11 horses, which to me is absolutely staggering. Yeah, it's such an intriguing looking race. And that's a really good stat, Johnny. Um, of course, Royal Scotsman's adding that real bit of spice to the race and is the 15 to 8 favourite, followed by High Royal at 4 to 1 and Paddington at 5 to 1. You've got Proud and Regal in there at 11 to 2. We are seeing uh, support for Cairo, who's been backed into 12 to 1 since we've gone back uh, up with it. Um, obviously, Sp uh, Paddington spearheads uh, Aiden, uh, your team there. But um, yeah, obviously, Cairo was you know, beaten on the dirt, but showed really smart form as a two-year-old. So I guess punters are trying to find a bit of value. But I mean, I think, you know, if you look at all the, all the stats in the past, all signs to, points towards Royal Scotsman, he's, he's going to be, he's going to be hard to beat, you know, fitness, not coming fresh, success in groups. And of course the draw will be uh, very important as well. Ideally you want to be drawn and stalled three or lower. So when you do consider everything, it's hard to look past Royal Scotsman. He stays the trip. He's rated 118. The ground's going to suit. He won at group level, and um, so and he's very popular into 15 to 8 from 11 to 4. I also think the Roger Varian horse Charon is going to be interesting, who came second, you know, to the French 2000 guineas runner up Isaac Shelby in the Greenham. Um, they want to roll the dice again with him after things didn't quite go to plan in Newmarket. Um, and he's going to come here and see see how things go. So that's going to be an interesting one as well at 20 to 1. What do you make of it, Danny? It's a tricky one from the British point of view, I think, Johnny, because obviously Royal Scotsman was only supplemented late. I thought they were going to go to Ascot, but obviously I think they've seen that it maybe not be the strongest of classics. They decided to roll the dice. I think the big thing with Royal Scotsman is Jamie Spencer on board. Jim Crowley mm -hmm. not on board this time around. They've decided to go back to a tried and tested method, uh, the Coles, the Spencers and the Hayes over the years. And yes, he was unlucky at Newmarket, but my only concern is whether... He always is a bit unlucky. He was unlucky when he was second to Cowdian at Newmarket at the back end of last season. Is he one of those who might just not get his day in the sun? I can't have High Royale at the price, given he was 125 for the Guineas and now he's 9-2. to two. Um, I do like Paddington. I like both of Aidens. I think Cairo, I was at uh, Maidan, Aiden, when, when Cairo disappointed in the UAE derby. But did he just not take to the track at all on that occasion, Aiden? Yeah, no, he didn't. Uh, he didn't lose any weight. Um, so, obviously, he... When he got the kickback straight away, he, he's just shut down, we think. Um, so uh, usually if, if, if a horse, if that happens, that's what usually happens. So we, we think that was the reason. Lovely stuff. 
It's a big ask, Johnny, for him to come back, Cairo. But I think just at the prices, um, I'd probably be with with Aiden's pair, Paddington and Cairo. What was your best winner of the Guineas in? Jim Johnny here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a yeah, list now. <laughs> I can't even remember one of them. So you better call that some of them. Um, I suppose. Listen, did Rafa Gibraltar win the Guineas? He did. Yeah. So, uh, sure. What else? Um, um, it's a long time ago, Johnny. I think, isn't it? You know. So I listened. It, it's um, I, I suppose he was probably one of the most impressive, was he? I think. Special, I think. special horse. You also yeah. had the likes of, we'll say, Churchill, Glen Church. Eagles, um, Henry the Navigator, Master Craftsman, yeah. some right good horses. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> He's only won it 11 times. You're no, asking a hard question, Johnny. <laughs> Oh, that's a long time ago all those races so there we go yeah so well yeah, yeah. a race that isn't a long time ago is the marble hill aiden i have to say um you have two runners here um have to say i love the run of paddington or rather of democracy first time out um just just uh, you, you mentioned he was a bit green when he sort of got a squeeze late on but different ground tomorrow yeah that it will be interesting is right he's a no name ever and uh they do handle a dig in the ground and he did as well when he won at the Curra. so he's a High enough action horse, uh, but he does travel with plenty of speed. But uh, like we're going to tra- learn a lot about him as well for Ascot. Um, he's everything has went well with him since. He, he's a good, strong traveler, and um, uh, did the same at the Cora. But when Wayne dropped him, he just took took a little bit of time to get going. But then going to the line, he was well on top. So we're going to learn a lot about him as well. I think uh, tomorrow, Johnny. Yes. And your other run on the race, quite similar in the sense that um, again, it's an only never horse, His Majesty, and also won first time out of the Cora on softish. Yeah, that's it, exactly. And and he, he's probably a lazy horse at home, so it's going to be interesting when, when obviously, when they walk together uh, during the week, uh, uh, Ryan's horse came out on top um, as well. So, But maybe this horse keeps a bit for when he goes racing, you know. So uh, it will be interesting. Um, we're going to find out about faster ground for him as well, and we're going to find out going up to six furlongs, so, uh, where it was five furlongs when he won, you know. So... It's, it's going to tell us a lot for Ascot going forward. But at home, Ryan's horse is a little bit ahead of him. Um, but it was a little bit like at the last day, the last the horse ran as well. So maybe he does keep a bit. That's a fascinating insight. And uh, this race, Danny, unlike the uh, Guineas, we've two stallions strongly represented, Noni Never and Bungle in the Jungle. What do you make of it? Uh, I like it both of Aiden's two, but I'm like one uh, side by night of thunder. I thought Noche Majika was very impressive. I know Aiden put up Alabama as one to follow this year, but he... He beat him out of sight, really, at Cork on his first start. And I thought that was deeply impressive. Paddy Toomey, has got his team in good form. I think you've got to deeply respect both of Aidan's. And also, give me the beat boys, who stayed on really strongly to score for Jesse Harrington last time out. But I thought Notche Majika uh, impressed me deeply on that occasion and gets my vote. And you, Mark? I'm going to say as well, Notche Majika, you know, albeit I don't think, I'm sure Aidan might talk about it with Alabama, but... He just looked in really green on the day, and I wouldn't be taking that run literally as a, as a view of his ability. But I thought the winner was really, really excellent. Time form of Hallam Down is the sixth best uh, two year old performance of the season on, on that. And, you know, albeit it, it won kind of variable to deal with, I think coming into last week, uh, 18 of the 25 meetings, I saw it quoted somewhere, were run on ground with uh, soft in the description or soft or worse. So, you know, there is a chance that as we get onto better ground, we could see form transform and uh, different things uh, adjust in that way. But I just thought Nacho Majika, even the market really screamed in his favour that day. And given there had been, you know, a lot of big reputations heading into that maiden at Cork, uh, I thought that was telling. And, uh, you know, Paddy Toomey among the, on the winners this week. And uh, I can see Nacho Majika be very, very hard to beat, I think. Yeah, briefly, Aidan, have you a plan with Alabama? Another known they never. Yeah, no, he, he came back flat from uh, Cork and he had a bit of a temperature the next day. So we, we put down that to, for it was a good enough reason for his flat run. We thought he was much better than that. He's working very well again. He's He was nearly going to the maiden this week, um, but we decided to give him another week. Uh, so he'll probably appear shortly again. Um, so Cork was soft ground and, and maybe the ground was too soft for him and maybe he was a little bit flat and a whole lot of things combined together for his disappointing run but uh, like we said like the winner was very impressive that day and he did handle soft ground well so it's going to be interesting with all that all those farm lines it's going to be totally different ground and we're going to learn an awful lot more and I, it's, it's great to be learning before we go to Ascot because what usually happens here we're racing on soft ground before Ascot and then we go to Ascot and reality kicks in you know so we're going to find out a lot with them all I think. 100 percent and we'll have a brief look now at the greenland stakes aiden doesn't have a runner in this but um i suppose the the eye-catching um riding booking here is ryan moore riding for uh, charles hills on garris mark 
Yeah, Johnny, look, at, I think the British sprinters are, you know, in general at the moment, I think they're ahead of us. I really hope that the big bear can go and put on a show for Ireland this weekend across at Haydock because we need depth in that division, I think. And Ladies Church was impressive for Johnny last weekend, but I think far that, we're a little light on the ground in terms of sprinters. Uh, and this race has been good for British visitors in the past too. I think Garris, uh, you know, I'd imagine it's going to be favoured, but Art Power has a very, very good record here. Uh, more than entitled to come on for his first round of the season at York. You know, given his record in, in coming over to Ireland, I could, I could easily see this has been the target. One run, blow away the cobwebs, sharpen up and have a really cut at this uh, six furlongs his trip as well. So I, I'd nearly give Art Power the vote, Johnny, but be interested to see just how dry the ground is the weekend before fully nailing the colours to the mast. Strong representation for Britain here, Danny. Yeah, Gareth did, did it well at, at Newmarket. Obviously, the form's taken a boost with, sorry, the, sadly, the late, great creative force winning before his untimely demise. And, of course, uh, the second Comanche Falls ran well behind Azuri Blue as well. So the form does have a good, strong look to it. Twilight Jets, one I'd be interested in in terms of Michael O'Callaghan. I mean, he won well on his return to action last term. Is he one horse that they can get fit that first time out? And that's where he shows his best form. But probably like Mark, I like Art Power. Got a decent record overall in Ireland. I think he's another one who maybe comes on for his first start of the season. And he's won at the Curragh on good ground before. Um, to me, to be his team were in OK form. So I, I thought I would side with him over Garris. Before we get to the naps, Aidan, I have to ask you about Little Big Bear. Mark mentioned him here. Obviously, you're going over to Haydock. It's, 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 I guess we, we're, we're looking at him as a sprinter going forward now, are we? I think so. Well, we, we knew we'd only going to get the one chance in in um, a new market to see. And listen, it there was combination stuff we felt didn't work but he showed all the speed and we didn't have much time to be chopping and changing anymore so I had it in my head that we go to the Greenlands but I, obviously I forgot that it was uh, a, a four year old and up so and obviously that was uh, that was in our head to get a run into him before the Commonwealth back over six so we're very happy with him he's done a couple of sharp bits and, and we've been very happy with what we saw like he will progress because it's his first time back over six but to go to ask us, uh, to be fair to him, we, we thought it was the right thing to do. We're very happy with him. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing him run. And like he is a horse with an awful, an awful lot of natural speed. So it's going to be interesting. Who's this jockey you've booked? El de Tori. I don't know, Johnny. The lads booked him. <laughs> I remember him winning on the quirky Scorpion back in the day uh, for you. And that's a long, long time ago. And you've had a lot of Guineas winners in the meantime. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's let's get naps for Saturday, starting with you, Mark. I go Notche Magica in the Marble Hill, the one fifty-five. I will go a safe cracker in the four fifty. Um, very very consistent horse. What are you with, Nick? I'm definitely sticking with Royal Scotsman, ticking all the boxes for me in the big one. I think it'll be hard to beat. OK, we're moving on now to uh, Sunday and the race again that Aidan has an exceptional record in is uh, the Tattersalls Gold Cup. The proviso here is that we don't actually know what's running. But Aidan, the, the talk that Vadini is going to come over and be supplemented, this is going to be a brilliant renewal of the race. Oh, yeah, which is great. And, and listen, it looks is Michael Stout's horse there. And listen, mm. they're all they're all there, which is great. And that's what we want um, for Irish racing. That's very important. And it looks all the racing looks very, very competitive this weekend. And. Listen, that's brilliant, really. Um, and hopefully, Badini will come um, because uh, that's what we need. Win, lose, or draw. And like, you can't win every day. Um, so um, we hope that he does come. We're going to have a look back on Luxembourg winning the um, Irish Champion Stakes last year. I, this was a phenomenal training performance, phenomenal riding performance. Will he likely run on Sunday, Aidan? The plan is to run, Johnny. Yeah, no, Ryan gave him a great ride on the day. And, um, Killian and Andrew and everyone and uh, Jamie I think at the time had they had him in great order um, yeah no the plan is to run we're looking forward to him running uh, everything has went well with him uh, since the last day and um, no re really looking forward to him running now and is is he you, you seemed happy enough with the comeback run as well uh, yeah it was a bit of a mess really um, uh, Joseph's horse was very good um, Declan gave him a great ride Joseph had him in great order and it was just a uh, steadied up race and and uh, and uh, he just got trapped back a little bit and he was just a little bit at the mercy of the race and that that can happen sometimes and that's the way it was and it was only a trial so it didn't matter really uh, Wayne looked after him but we were very happy with his run now so um, uh, it'll, it'll be probably a different race I'd say I'd imagine on Sunday we can have a look back at Vadini winning the Eclipse at Sandown last season but whilst we look at that Aidan will, will Point Lonsdale run as well do you think 
No, he's going to go to, it looks like at the moment, going to go to the Coronation. Uh, he's in good form, and uh, that's. I think that's where he's going to go. Yeah, this was a brilliant race last year, Mark. It was really one of the races of the year, and Vadini swooping the outside, and a pointer maybe in itself that Aiden is just going to be represented by Luxembourg here. Uh, look, I can't wait to see this horse again. And, you know, we're going to get decent ground like we got here at Sandown on this day when he was so impressive. You know, it was his turn of foot that, that won the race. And, you know, Churchill at the moment, his sire is having an unbelievable run too. Things have really, really started to click for him in, in recent weeks and months. But, you know, Luxembourg, I'm far from giving up on him. But my slight concern coming into it would be just, is the pace going to be strong enough to see him at his best? Because I thought he was, ex- when he won there as champion, we had Stone Age going out in front. We had Broom sitting in behind. It was really honest all the way. And I think you see the best of Luxembourg. Luxembourg when it's absolutely honest and relentless and he really shines I just wonder here could it be slightly tactical Pismadil could go forward Bay Bridge will be sitting close to them probably but just if it, if it did turn into a, a race where emphasis was on speed to a degree Vadini's turn of foot could could be key here um, I, I really really think he's a brilliant addition to the race and I think he's probably the one to beat uh, for all that you know I really hope that we get these top horses coming to the boil it's, it's exciting to have some of the best middle distance horses in Europe coming to the car this weekend so I'd encourage anyone that isn't going to be sitting watching on racing TV to get in your car, get in your bike and come to County Kildare. It'd be great to see you. And it is Aidan great having the French over, isn't it? Oh, no, I, absolutely. Everything Mark said is 100% and I think that's it exactly. And that could happen. Um, it could become tacky because I don't think any of those, I, any of those horses might, I don't think any of them will want to go on. Mm. So it could be very tactical and, and it could suit the horse that he'll quicken. And, and Mark was right, the champion stakes was a solid mile and a quarter strongly run race and listen it's our horse's second run of the season and like we didn't want to put his head into the oven yet um but like he like he's, he's a big straightforward horse um um but it, uh, hopefully Vadini will come and, and it probably will suit him if he does come and Danny just some of the winners of this race you go back to Grace Wallow Hurricane Run Fame and Glory um even in more recent times al Kazim. but this looks a brilliant renewal to me Dan yeah strength in depth all over Johnny uh I think Mark's made a good summation of most of them, really. I was at Newmarket when Mark was second to Adia on his return, and he looked quite big. I think he will probably come on for that run for him, Burroughs. I wouldn't put you off him, because despite what having winning form on a softer surface, he also has plenty of smart successes uh, on good ground. So he's another one I wouldn't fail to mention. And I think it could turn into a bit of a pace race. Bay Bridge is the concern for him that if they really did turn it on late, could he be able to show the same turn of foot as a Vidani? So I think with that in mind, I'm probably in agreement with Mark that Vidani's an interesting runner. I think it's fascinating they've decided to come here. I don't think this was the plan whatsoever. They had it all mapped out towards the arc and this has been a late addition to uh, to their schedule. So he's a fascinating runner. But Luxembourg ran better, I think, than the bare results suggest last time, as Aiden's already alluded to. So, yeah, it's pretty a stacked group one, which is what you want to see, Johnny. Absolutely, Dan. This is racing at its best at a world-class racetrack. Older horses against uh, younger horses over a mile and two. French, UK and Irish interest. Absolutely fascinating. The 350 is the Tattersall's Irish 1000 guineas. We're going to just hear now from Dermot Weld. He obviously is represented likely by the hot favourite Tahira, but he's going to leave it to the last moment in terms of uh, who he declares. Can I gather about the two Aga Khan fillies participation in the guineas? Is that right? Yeah, we make a firm decision on Friday at the moment. Both fillies are likely to run. I have to say that now. But just as I said, declarations Friday will make a decision definitely Friday morning. See how they both are. See, that's it. Both Tahira and Tarawa ran on the same day, of course, but Tahira had the travelling to do. Have their routines differed much in the intervening period? I suppose they have, yes, they have differed slightly because having to do the travelling there and back for new markets, you know, it takes a little bit out of them. And Tahira did lose her, you know, a fair bit of weight. And uh, that would be my concern. I'd love another week. That's exactly it. But anyway, the race comes when it does. And um, I'm pleased with her. And as of now, she runs. And Dermot, no Mauge in the field this time around. But the five-day entries came through today. Do you think it's stacking up to be a pretty fair renewal? It'll be a very good renewal of the race. No, no, there's some nice fillies in this race. There's progressive fillies in the race. And I'm sure Meditate will um, be a better filly and big challenge. Yeah, well, that's actually a beautiful way for Durham to end that conversation with Gary O'Brien at Goran because Meditate uh, likely reopposes Aiden. Um, I suppose the ground was soft in Newmarket and it was a first run back and a whole lot of stuff. Uh, but we were very happy with her run in Newmarket. Uh, she finished off very well. Um, we think she, she, everything has went well with her sense. Brett has been very happy. Wayne rides on her work and Jamie. Everyone is very happy with her sense. Uh, so we would think and hope uh, that she's going to progress plenty from there. 
That's interesting, Mark, because I suppose on paper it is hard to see a reverse in the form with what is a very, very good favourite. She is a very good favourite. Um, look, maybe I'm getting picky with her here, but I just thought I thought she was a higher class filly than Maj. Maybe experience is just what counts so much in that finish, but I was slightly disappointed she just wasn't able to edge ahead. I didn't think if they kept running for another half furlong she would have got back in front for all. She was carried across the track. Um, you know, maybe that'll put hairs in her chest and we'll see a more battle hardened version of her here. I'm not suggesting she shirked it by any means, but I just thought that you know, resolution the the winner was was more resolute. Um, you know, I'm interested here if Aiden is never ending story, a possible runner here, are you likely to run her? No, she's going to go to the French Oaks, Mark. That's the plan. Uh, we'd probably run Jackie O and uh, Dower House, I think they're the they're the three that we were thinking of running. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, no, look at yeah, go ahead, Mark. Go on, Johnny. Sorry, go ahead. No, look, I'd, I'd be keen to give Never Ending Story another go wherever she turns up next. I thought that was slightly tactical last time but in France that she wasn't beaten all that far. So, uh, But in regards to this, to hear if, if we see this sort of explosive performance that was in the mile there last season, um, she's going to be very difficult to beat. And I don't mean to be giving you an obvious one here with favourites, but, you, you know, she is what she is. She's very, very classy. She's going to be short, Nicola. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And obviously with that news, Aiden will probably be shorter even more. So well to hear is four to seven. Um and obviously was a close runner up in, in the new market version. Um and obviously Weld just said, you know, the lack of runs probably cost her the race at Newmarket. Um but yeah, very short and um probably punters will be looking for a bit of value, including Meditate, who we have in there at, at four to one. Obviously, Aiden, if you win, it'll be your 11th time winning the race. And the fact that, you know, Connections said they wanted to supplement Jackie O for the race, it certainly put her on, on my radar and probably will, will be my nap of the day. So um, Jackie O's in there at, at nine to one. But again, um, following that news, Aiden, will probably shorten up when this is played out. Yeah, Aiden, J- Jackie O's pedigree is, is to die for, really. Yeah, we went to, um, she won her maiden nicely at, at Nace. And then we went to Navin to see what, whether she was going to be an Oaks filly or a, Guineas filly, and uh, we said if she got beaten, Avon, we go back to the Irish Guineas, and if she didn't, she'd go to the Epsom Oaks. We can still go to the Oaks after it. Um, I think her brother didn't stay, uh, her brother was a miler, um, so it, there's every chance um, she's, she's come out of Navin very well and is working very nice, so it's going to be interesting. Danny, last word to you on the Guineas. Uh, Tahira is an interesting one in terms of what Dermot World had to say there, actually, Johnny, because after the race at Newmarket, he said in the uh, in the enclosure that he needed another couple of weeks before the 1,000 guineas. He would like to have got a trial into her, but he lamented the soft ground uh, across Ireland at that stage, which kind of stopped him getting a run in, which I thought was interesting given she'd obviously won on soft ground at the back end of last season. But I think on all known form, I know what Mark says, you don't get many who win twice at a Dubai Carnival and then go on to win a 1,000 guineas. But I still thought it was a fine running defeat, given she probably could have needed one or one or two more weeks. I think stripping fitter here, she's the one to beat. And make sure if Torara doesn't run, put her in your racing TV trackers, because she ran an absolute storm. She met more trouble than me in, in an Ibiza nightclub, Johnny, when uh, second last time out of Leopardstown. She'll come on a ton for that. And I'd, I'd be quite disappointed if they run here, because I think she's got a big prize in her herself. And um, for Jackie O fans... If you're a Jacqueline Quest fan, you know, you, all those years ago, the heartbreak of that defeat, you'll be hoping Jackie O can maybe get one back for the progeny. Absolutely. And you can celebrate by uh, meeting Danny and I beat them. We're going to let Aiden go now. And Aiden, it's been brilliant having you on. The last question I'll ask you, anything else look out for the weekend? These are great weekends, the best racetrack in Ireland, arguably. You have a lot of nice kind of maidens as well and a couple in the handicaps. Jamie, Danny, now you're putting me on the spot again. Um, sorry. Um, let me think. Um... No, so I suppose the main ones... Uh, uh, in the, the classics. Old, yeah, in the classics, yeah. And, and then nice, the horse runs in the maiden on, on, on Saturday is a nice horse. So, um, yeah, he, he got beef, but he's a nice cold. Um, is that unquestionable, Aiden? Yes, Mark, yes. Perfect, thanks. So, yeah. Aiden, it's, been, it's, it's been brilliant having you on, and uh, we'll let you back to um, the lovely sunny day that you have in Bally Doyle, and we, we wish you the very best this weekend. Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Aiden. Thanks, Aiden. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Yeah. Bye. That Bye-bye. was the uh, that was the legendary uh, Aiden O'Brien checking in from um, Sunkist uh, Tipperary um, or Sun- Sunkist County Tipperary. Um, we're going to also just note here before we get the naps that Ladbrokes has an offer for new customers. Um, this is a thirty euro match bet, Nicola. Yeah, new customer offer a match bet up to thirty euro. Just scan the QR code there on the screen and sign up. 
Simple as that. Yeah, Aiden in great form, if that's a pointer to how his horse is going to get on this weekend. And uh, before we uh, get he the... so relaxed, uh, didn't he, Johnny? I've never seen so him relaxed. that relaxed. So relaxed. Like, he, just look, he, he looked a pina colada short of being on holiday. Um, <laughs> yeah, but speaking of that, good Danny... Good um, <laughs> I'll go and get him one. I'll go down to the bar quickly. <laughs> Um, Danny is, I mean, Danny looks like a man who is itching to get back to the bar. Um, Danny, what are you looking forward to on the Sunday? I think, I think away from the Guineas, the Gallinule looks pretty ultra competitive, but I think for me, it's all about that, uh, that Tadasauce Gold Cup. That's the sort of race that, you know, from our point of view on racing TV, from, from a social side as well, the amount of people all interact with content regarding some of the big runners in that. It's a, it's a big weekend for us and yeah, looking forward to that immensely. And then obviously the roadshow rolls on to Epsom. It, it never stops on racing TV, Johnny. It never stops on racing TV. Um, I'll be in Limerick on Friday on that note. I think we might have footage here of his Badil. Um, I'm going to put him up as a sporting sort of nap on the Sunday. He's going to run in, to be fair, it's an amazing renewal of the Tassels Gold Cup. Um, but his Badil is my nap for Donegal O'Brien. Um, Mark, you're gone with Vadini, taking him on. I hate to take you on, Johnny. You know, listen, it never usually ends, ends pretty for either of us, probably when it, when it goes like that, judging and punches down. But no, look at... I, I do think Vidini is going to be a class apart. I do have time for Piz Vidini, but I just think you're dealing with one of the world's best middle distance horses here. And I hope he puts on a show. Nicola? Uh, yeah, and just on, on that note, actually, Vidini's around the six to four mark, but Piz Badil kind of tissue price of around 25 to one. So that would be a very nice one to land for you, Johnny. Um, I'm going to stick with the uh, Irish 1000 guineas. Uh, it was really interesting listening to Aiden there. But uh, yeah, Jackie O for me. Uh, obviously, favourite will be hard to beat, but with the connections supplementing her, I think there could be value had at nine to one. You won't be at the Curra. You have the small matter of looking after a couple of twins. I mean, I could bring the twins to the Curra, but I'm not sure it will be their scene. Who knows? What would you do, Danny? Would you be on hand to give me a break and do a bit of babysitting? Absolutely. I'm 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 major <laughs> babysitting with a capital B. Danny, what would you do with the twins? Oh, is there not a little, you know, could you not give them to the hubby for the day, Nicola, and you can go out and have a couple of glasses of Prosecco <laughs> and enjoy yourself? He's an odds compiler, so he'll be busy as well. Oh, never mind then. Well, Dan, <laughs> bring, Danny, bring mind I beat it for you. Yeah, why not? Why not? It's an adults only, but I'll try my best. Aiden will mind them under that uh, yeah. under that umbrella, I think, the way things are going. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's, it is it is time to wrap up the show. Just a couple of other messages for you. Do gamble responsibly this weekend. There's a lot of a lot of racing going on. There's no need to be rushing into the next race if you don't fancy anything. Gamble responsibly. Uh, loads of race sets occur all on Racing TV. Watch every race exclusively on the channel. Expert team throughout the meeting with Gary O'Brien presenting all three days. Joined by Jane Mangan, Lisa O'Neill and Ruby Walsh. Dedicated coverage available on Racing TV Extra. And a reminder that if viewers in the Republic of Ireland want to take advantage of the Labrooks offer, they can just uh, roll back in the video and scan the QR code or follow the link in the show description. Very briefly, Mark, last word to you because the Cur is a, I love going racing at the Curra and this is a fantastic weekend racing, particularly Sunday nearly. Oh yeah, absolutely, Johnny. It, it, like, I mean, Sunday, I've always nearly, it, it, back to the, down the years before I was working, I would love to watch Saturday at home, get burned up for it and go up on the Sunday and you get the, the benefit of two group ones on the day. Um, look at I hope to get a crowd there they've got the weather so I'll have, have every chance in that regard um, I, lo look, I love the flash I don't have anything against the National Hunt at all I absolutely love that too but I think this is just as we're beginning to tick on and tick on and particularly as I said when the ground is just beginning to change it just creates that air of you know you could get a bit of value at the prices hopefully this weekend if you're bearing that in mind as a factor so um, ah, look at uh, will we see you there? Yeah, I'm hoping to go Sunday, yeah, so um, can't wait. Great and we, we we will thank Mark from the Irish Field, Nicola from our sponsor, Ladbrokes. Really um, thankful not only to Aidan O'Brien for coming in um, like that, but also Danny Archer, who uh, is in Ibiza. So, uh, yeah, we hope you enjoyed that, and then uh, we shall be back soon. Cheers, guys. On the Wire, in association with Ladbrokes.